Happy Sunday, Trinity Church. So glad that you have taken a portion of your day to join us online. We have an incredible service planned for you. And whether you are watching from your home, job, or anywhere else, maybe invite a friend to join you by copying the link and sending it to someone. Maybe even start a watch party. Either way, let's take a moment to worship God together. There is no Stand against your mind Always been with us Every battle you already won We already won Don't think there's no weapon There is no weapon That has ever left a mark on you There is no weapon
thankful that we serve a God who's a man of his word. That other people can fall short with you. They can say things that they're going to do and never do. But our God doesn't do that. He is faithful to complete what he has started. And this morning, as we were worshiping and giving praise to God, I was, I was reading this article earlier that the shooting in New York was the 198th mass shooting of 2022. This year alone. Yesterday, I was texting with a friend who was telling me that her mother-in-law got diagnosed with cancer. Her grandfather got diagnosed with cancer. Cancer. My mom called me in tears because her cousin is currently going through chemotherapy. And I was, I was just in the presence of God. I just said, thank you, Jesus, that I have a hope in you. I don't know how people live this life without Jesus because I know that I can't and I know that I don't want to. And we say these words not to fill the air, but to remind us that our God is faithful, that he's present in every heartache. He's patient with us. He walks with us. And we have a hope that if you need healing, you can receive it with Jesus. If you need to be provided for, he's going to provide for you because he is your father and he's a man of his word. So I invite you to lift your hands and surrender this morning to just thank the Lord. God, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you that we have a hope in you, Lord. And I pray for every person in this room, Lord God, every family represented here, that they're going to have peace that surpasses every understanding. God, we pray for the families affected in these shootings, especially in New York. We come against hate and we we speak love and we speak that these families are going to get closer to you, Jesus, and find hope in you. We pray healing. We pray provision. We pray restoration right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We give this service to you, Lord. Let us walk out here differently than we came in with hope and faith and knowing that you can do the impossible. We thank you. We praise you. And all God's people said... Come on. Amen. Amen. Well, happy, happy Sunday. You came to an exciting place. And so we invite you um, to just take the next few seconds and greet someone. Don't sit down. It's just 30 seconds. Walk across the room. Say hello to someone during our FaceTime. As our in-person service heads to FaceTime, we wanted to take a moment to welcome those who are watching for the first time. If that's you, we consider you our VIP guests. We are so thankful for you and we just want to be a resource and get connected with you. If you would, text VIP to 66866 to let us know that you joined us today. We are so thankful for you. For things upcoming here at Trinity Church, check out this week's news. Hey parents, summer is just around the corner. Are you wondering where your children will spend their summer? We have the answer for you. Trinity Church's Summer Freedom Schools program. Here at Trinity Church, we offer exciting and enriching programming for children ages two years old through elementary school. We beat the academic summer slump with engaging literacy, science, and creative opportunities such as music, drama, dance, martial arts, and so much more. Summer camp will begin on June 20th and go through to July 29th. Visit tcamiami.org and download the registration form to secure your child's slot. Space is very limited. We look forward to seeing your children this summer. Gen 2050, summer camp. I can't believe it. Wow, it's real. Hey guys. That is awesome! The most exciting weeks of the year are coming soon. Get ready and register now. I can't wait! 
Men's breakfast is back, fellas. On Saturday, June 11th, it doesn't matter if you are young like me or old or anywhere in between. If you are a guy, we would love for you to join us. You are not going to want to miss the food, the fellowship, and the strong word. You can register now for only five bucks by texting CAVEMAN to 66866. I just can't wait to see you there. God bless. Hey grads, Graduation Sunday is June 12th during our 11.30 a.m. service. Education is a very important accomplishment that we value here at Trinity. We want to take a moment and honor you for all your hard work and perseverance to push through and graduate. If you are a high school, college, or undergrad graduate of 2022, this celebration is for you. Caps and gowns are supplied by Trinity Church as well as a moment in our service for you to walk across the stage and receive a diploma. We encourage you to invite your friends and family to celebrate. To register, you can text GRAD 2022 to 66866. Mark your calendars. On July 3rd, Trinity Church will be hosting a freedom celebration. This is a party you do not want to miss. Starting at 7, we will have a powerful service for the adults and a fun and exciting program just for the kids. After service, there will be an amazing fireworks show and lots of great food. Start inviting your friends and family because this is an event you don't want to miss. We are in the middle of our Connect Group season and you don't want to miss out. Connect groups are designed to help create a community of people around you who love you, support you, and pray for you daily. They meet at different times throughout the week with a variety of activities to choose from. In fact, to check out all the groups we have to offer, just text Connect Groups to 66866. Hey, Pastor Rich here. If you are new to Trinity Church within the past month, I'll give you six weeks or more. We have something special just for you. This upcoming Sunday, June the 5th, we have a newcomer's lunch. This is an opportunity for you to meet our staff, Dr. Robin, me, hear more about our church, and get some great food. I mean great food. We would love for you to join us right here at the church at 1.30 p.m. in the chapel and we can't wait to see you there. I'm looking forward to meeting you personally. God bless. Hey, Trinity family. We have a special Memorial Day weekend celebration that we want you to be a part of. After our morning services, we invite you to come back at our special 5.30 p.m. service for our special premiere of the live stage production, Lose Control. We will have theater concessions, a pre-show, and more. So make sure you get here on time. This production is specifically designed to be viewed by adults and children 13 years and older. But don't worry, we're gonna have a fun and exciting movie night in TC Kids happening for the kids with popcorn, games, snow cones, and more. This production is completely free However, you do need to register, and you can register by texting Lose Control to 66866. We've got some stuff going at Trinity Church. Think again. Man, oh man, we are so excited about the coming days. And, um, I just want to reiterate, uh, we already have major number of people registered. The 5.30 p.m. show is going to be like none other we've ever done before. It's been written by our own Dante Palmer. He's writing it. He is directing it. I think he's even one of the stars in it. So, man, it, it is really a game changer production. I mean that with all my heart. Well, as you know, this is the season of Pentecost. We've been talking about it the last, I think, three to four weeks. And already $45,000 has been pledged June the 5th. 
And on your chair, there is a pledge card that I'd like you to reach for unless you already fill one out. It's right on your chair. And I'd like for everybody that calls Trinity home, maybe you only get here once or twice a month, but this is your home church. I want you to fill one of these out. Now, if you've never been here before or you're from out of town, this doesn't apply to you except the principle does. Maybe you should go back to your home church and say, here's my Pentecost offering. It may blow your pastor's mind, but you'll still get the blessing. And the Bible has commanded us to do this in Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Three times a year, God says, I want you to bring me your best offering past your tithe. That would be Passover, which was Easter Sunday, 50 days later, which will be June 5th, Pentecost. And then in the fall is the offering of atonement. And we've been doing, this will be our 18th year to receive the Pentecost offering. The blessings have poured out in our church like never before. God promises when you give on June 5th to give you five victories. They're on this page. Number one, God says, I'm gonna break the debt currently hanging over your life. Hallelujah. Leviticus 25, verses 25 through 28. Secondly, God will save and restore your whole family together in the Lord. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 39 through 42. Thirdly, the Bible says God will reveal himself to you in a brand new way this year. Exodus 34, verse 29. Number four, there will be a redistribution of wealth. Leviticus 23 and 22. And finally, you will have power over weakness. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I'll be preaching on that last point next Sunday. Do not miss it. It is a dynamic word from the Lord. Now, if you haven't already pledged, go ahead and do so now. What I want you to do is fill your name and address on this one side. Give us that. And then on the other side, there's a list of numbers. Maybe one of those numbers you would like to pledge if it's feasible. All right? If there's not a number there that relates to you, there's a place where you can fill in a number that you would like to pledge. And by the way, we've never chased after someone that couldn't make their pledge. We're not coming after you. We're just trying to figure out Uh, the amount that could be coming in that day. So we'll know what we'll be able to do through our Peacemakers ministry this coming year. And then after you've made that pledge, if you haven't already, do it today. Then I want you to tear the bottom third off. And on that bottom third are the five promises. I want you to keep the five promises on your person, in your Bible, in your notebook, you know, in your pants, if you want to keep it in your purse, keep that so you can keep believing God for those five victories. And then in a moment, the host team is going to pass the offering buckets in front of you. And when they do, I want you to drop the pledge in the offering bucket, if you would. So now it's time for the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. I love this passage in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 through 16, the writer of Hebrews makes the statement, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and share with others For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. In other words, the writer said, give to God, give to sacrifice to God, give to God. He'll take care of you. Now, I want to say this church, Trinity, through your giving, has been able to build water wells this year in Africa. Here are a couple pictures I've chosen from the organization that we support in Africa. It's called World Serve, led by friends of mine. And there is the new water well that's dispensing water 
the gentleman in the red uh, kind of a shawl, I guess, is Mr. Miles Garrett. Some of you in the room would know him to be one of the greatest defensive football players in America. He plays for the Cleveland Browns. He's a dynamic Christian, and he's part of the World Serve team. That's why I like that picture. There's another picture there. I love this because there's so many moms there uh, with their kids getting water, the new water well. This is in Kenya. They have water wells all over Africa. This is our third year in a row to be able to send thousands of dollars to them. We've been able to send thousands of dollars through the Convoy of Hope, uh, which meets the needs of people in distress around the world. This year, of course, we've been sending it to help the Ukrainian people who are suffering right now. There's just, I, I got a picture from them and it's just sad what's going on there. Many of you are joining with me in our new crypto coin known as Philcoin. And I'm an ambassador. Dr. Rob and I are ambassadors of this new crypto coin. And we've pledged as a Christian organization, if you can believe this, $10 million to the people of the Ukraine as well. It's funny because... The owners of this crypto coin, one is Puerto Rican and one is Chinese. Uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, ambassadors on our team is Pastor Greg Toussaint from right here in Miami, dear friend of mine. But we as a church also support events here at home. In fact, this past week, Dr. Rob and I visited our Trinity New York church in New York City. Folks, if you can believe this, it's been over two years that I've been there to visit or to speak into the life into our team there. We've got a full team. We've got hundreds of people in our church. I haven't even been there for two years. We got there this past week, and what a time we had. I had been asked by Joel Osteen if I would help set up uh, 25 key leaders from New York City uh, to have a meeting with Joel this past Monday afternoon because Joel has been invited by the Steinbrenners to have his first outdoor meeting in two years since before COVID. And it will be held August the 6th, Saturday night at Yankee Stadium in New York City. And uh, we were able to gather great leaders for this meeting and our district superintendent of the Assemblies of God, Dr. Dwayne Durst, joined with me and our churches of the Assemblies of God in New York, all over the state, uh, will be a part of this great event in August. Here's a picture of uh, Joel and me and Dr. Durst and his associate. Uh, other pastors were there and just, just a great time together. But then, if you could believe this, this past Monday night, it was Pastor Taylor, my son, and my privilege to attend Mayor Eric Adams' prayer vigil for the families of the victims killed in Buffalo a week ago this past Saturday night. And uh, we never dreamed that it would be held at my dear friend uh, Bishop Carlton Brown's church. Here's a picture of Carlton in front of the big sign welcoming all the people close when he's helped pastor taylor like you can't believe we've been so blessed by this great man of god as the largest church in harlem bethel pentecostal assembly and then mayor eric adams the new mayor <clears throat> of new york city really stood tall that night and here's what he said he said that the little girl he got there late and he said the little girl 11 years of age who was killed that night, and that's why he was late, he had to go to the hospital, by drive-by shooters, 11 years of age, he said that the drive-by shooters were filled with the same demons that were in the man who killed the 10 people in Buffalo several days earlier. And he was irate at the killing, the slaughter of people right here in our own country. Now, folks, little did Taylor and I know that we would be 
a part of this event, but we sure didn't know that the next day on the front page of the New York Daily News was a picture of Mayor Eric Adams, who was a Christian, by the way, and uh, here he is lighting candles for the victims. And it just says, pain is pain. But then I opened up to the middle of the magazine, and there's Pastor Taylor and me on the front row of the church praising God that night. And I just said, thank the Lord. Now, it looks like there's a little tiny crowd, but the place seats 2,000, and that's a little squirrely little tiny picture. But man, there was about 850 to 900 people there. What a night we had. Now, what am I saying, church? Why did I mention all this and show you all the pictures? Your giving has taken this church all over the world to needy and broken places over the past 23 years. Please don't stop now. Our God can do mighty things through a group of people like Trinity Church who's wholeheartedly given over to Jesus with their time and their talents and their treasures. I love and appreciate you more than you'll ever know. This past week, I was in New York. I missed you terribly. You didn't miss me at all because you didn't even know I was out of town. (laughs) But I missed you. Hey, let's be great givers again today, can't we? Let's just do it. Let's just say, God, I'm investing in your work, and I'm believing you're going to invest in me. And that's what he's done. We can only give today because he's given to us first. Hallelujah. Hey, if you're giving the old school way, and sometimes I do still, there's an envelope on your chair, and it just says the word possible on it. If you're making out a check, make it out to Trinity Church. If you're giving cash, put the cash in the envelope. Put your name and address so we can receipt you properly and then seal it. I never touch this money. We have a whole team of workers that handle all the funds. It's audited four times a year, one independent and four by the government, so you can give with great courage and confidence that this money is going to go to work for the kingdom of God. Also, those of you that are watching online and even here in the church, you see the different ways you can give. If you're giving electronically or text to give, I want you to do that. Is That's the way you give, especially our online church today. I love you so much. Hey, let's all raise our envelopes or raise our smartphones, however you're going to give today. And if you're making a pledge, include that too right now. Let's raise it. Lord, we thank you today that you have everything under control. Even when we think it's out of control, you've got everything under control. Bless your people today, as once again, they are faithful to you, my God. In Jesus' name we ask it. Everybody said, Amen. God bless you as you give. And see, on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Oh, and look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from His sign. No greater sacrifice. What He's done. What He's done. All the glory and the honor to the sun. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. Oh, I praise God for what He's done. Hey, yeah. For the freedom He has won. Say the name of love on games. 
he's done Lift your voice and say I'll never forget What he's done He healed my body I'll never forget How he changed my life What he's done Lift your voice and say I'll never forget What he's done What he's done What he's done My great uh, blessing and honor to have Pastor David Freeman. And today, Pastor David is going to preach the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Pastor David, who is somewhat cerebral, as all of you know, I'm talking deep. He holds a master's degree from one of the universities in Illinois in intern net technology. I remember the first time he and Linda went with a group of us on a cruise ship. It was about a year or two after you guys got here. And we went to the Bahamas and some other places, five days, about 50 Trinity Church people. We had a big time on a cruise ship. So we went on to the island one day, this little island where we were. So we were, you know, skidooing and all the water sports pastor dave was leaned up against a tree with his sunglasses reading a computer technology book under god it was that thick i said how you doing pastor Dave? perfect it's a great day and i thought that was just like he was showing off he read that book that week. Every time I saw him at a table, he was reading that book. I thought, dear God, that's a foreign language to me. Unfortunately, it's still somewhat foreign to me. But he is a brilliant man, but he is a Holy Ghost man. One of my dearest friends. He and Pastor Linda have been with us for 22 years. Everybody, put your hands together and scream hallelujah as Pastor Dave Freeman comes to bless us. Love you, Chief. Well, good afternoon, and you may be seated. So before I get into this, the divinity of the Holy Spirit, I got to honor the, the senior shepherds of the house, pastors, doctors, Rich and Robin Wilkerson. They have been friends, <laughs> mentors, guides, direction finders keepers for us for decades decades man we're getting old <laughs> it's not the age it's the miles i honor you today and i cannot you have no idea how much they mean to me and my wife god bless you and thank you for this honor so before i continue let's pray lord as I raise my hands to you today, Lord, I pray that your spirit will come upon me in a mighty way, that these words that you have given me would fall on fertile hearts, that you would move on the bodies and minds and spirits of those who have come today and move mightily, Lord, so that in these coming days, we will feel your spirit and move by the unction of your spirit in the coming days ahead. Lord, we thank you and we receive, amen. So I've been uh, given this task of defining or explaining the divinity of the Holy Spirit. And when I first received this request, I was like, this is obvious. Everybody knows this, this is no problem, I can do this. And then I thought about it, I said, you know, 
everybody here should know who the Holy Spirit is because this is a Pentecostal church. You know, Acts chapter 2, 1, and tongues of fire came upon their heads and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we attend this Pentecostal church and therefore should all understand that the Holy Spirit is divine. That should be given, right? Uh-huh. Now I have a whole lot of scripture I'm going to quote today because when defining the Holy Spirit, it should not be about my opinion. It should be backed up completely by the word of God. So let's get to it. So upon further thought and prayer, I began to understand that there is the distinct possibility that in this Pentecostal church that many of us do not understand the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Or even understand the divinity that has been given and assigned to each one of us. To understand the divinity of the Holy Spirit, we must first get the concept down of what it is to be divine. So according to the famous historian Gugel, divinity in Christian terms refers to the quality or nature of being God. So divine, break that down to divine, of, from, or like God, or no, like God in a big G or a God in a little g. That's from Webster. So when we refer to the Holy Spirit, we have to go back to the beginning of our existence recorded in Genesis 1-2. And that is my first point. Essentially, the Holy Spirit is eternal. Genesis 1-2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now, we all understand that the uncreated world was depicted as this formless, dark, chaotic place. And there was a separation between the darkness and the light. And God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was hovering over the darkness, ready to create life, order, and beauty. So, what exactly is God's spirit. Now consider this. The spirit of God is what the Hebrew authors call personal presence. God's personal presence. And the word they use for that is ruach. Got to get that in there. Ruach. Everybody say it with me. It's so fun. Ruach. So the closest example we have to this term is the word that we have called energy. And the people of India, they call that energy prana. People of China call that energy chi. And in the Western world, we call it today life force. But the people of Israel, they call it ruach. And if I were to associate this with a Bible verse, I would refer to Acts 17, 28, and you all, know, you all know that pretty well. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of our, our, your own poets have said, we are his offspring. So I'm going to ask you all to do something with me. I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath. So breathe out and breathe in. And just hold that breath. Don't die out of here. Now exhale. You feel that energetic flow? Felt pretty good, huh? It's like invigorating, relaxing. So in that breath, an exchange just happened. Your body extracted oxygen from the air you took in. And then it processed it, and upon using that, using that what you took in, and you expelled it as carbon dioxide, the stuff you can't use. Did you have any control of that electrochemical biological process? Nope. It just happens automatically, right? By a force that science still can't measure or explain. The vitality that you get from breathing deeply, that too is ruach. It animates you. In him we live and move and have our being. 
So once again, ruach. This is the same word used to describe God's personal presence. In other words, the fact that you are even breathing is an ongoing example of the presence of God's Holy Spirit in your life. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you are animated by the Spirit of God. Now, what is God's Spirit, his ruach, good for in this present day? Y'all Pentecostal, y'all should know. And that should be obvious. But we have to look back at our history book, the Bible, for examples. The first person in the Bible who God's ruach empowered for specific tasks was Joseph. God's spirit allowed him to interpret dreams. In essence, my second point, the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. Genesis 37, 5 through 8 chronicles an anointed dream that Joseph had. And it states, Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of the dream and what he had said. Hmm. When God speaks to you, sometimes you might need to keep it to yourself. <laughs> now, we all know what happened after that. His brother sold him into slavery, and ultimately he was able to save them all after the fact. When a famine came upon the land. And this salvation, this move of God, because there's no other way for it to be explained, was based on the foreknowledge he received from the Holy Spirit. And in Genesis 50, 20, Joseph um, sums up the aftermath of this experience. And you all know this too. You intended to harm me. You intended this for evil. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The Spirit of God is all-knowing. Could you, could I benefit from access to such foreknowledge? Absolutely, that answer is obvious, but what's keeping you from it? What's keeping me from it? Could it be you? Could it be me? Hmm. Moving on. Another characteristic of the Holy Spirit, and my third point, he is an all-powerful creator. Bezalel was a craftsman in the time of Moses who was empowered by the Holy Spirit to create the works of art that were replicas of the tabernacle in heaven. And it states in Exodus 31, 1 through 6, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Moreover, I have appointed Ohilab, son of Ahishamak, sorry if I mispronounced that, of the tribe of Dan to help him. Also, I have given ability to all skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you. God is creative. The Holy Spirit, his personal presence, his ruach, is creative and his spirit resting upon any one allows them to be creative too you are creative and so there is no difference in those men back then as us today they were all men and women with feet of clay just as we are but they were empowered by the Holy Spirit and this is the same power to create that each one of us has been given if, if we decide to act upon it. 
But more on that in a minute. Now, another group of people who were empowered by God's Ruach were the prophets. They were given the ability to see history from God's perspective and see what was happening based on what man was doing. Man had become evil and was unleashing injustice all over the earth. And they prophesied that a new order would come. And that order would come through the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit would transform the human heart. And this transformation would happen so that mankind could come to love God and do the will of God. And it says in Revelations 21, 3, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Now, of course, centuries passed. Jesus was introduced to the earth. This familiar scene in which he is baptized on the Jordan River chronicles the power of God resting upon him. Matthew 3, 16 and 17 says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. God's Holy Spirit. It literally came and rested upon Jesus in the form of a dove such that no one could deny that the spirit of God was on Jesus or that the beginning, that this was the beginning of the new covenant prophesied. The good news, God with us and eventually his spirit in us. From that point forward, Jesus was empowered through the spirit to heal people and forgive their sins. Jesus stated his mission in Luke 4, 18 through 21, quoting the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the captive free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And this is my favorite part, because right here, Jesus does something gangster. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And if we could put that in today's terms, Jesus sitting down, because nobody was allowed to sit down in the temple, Jesus sitting down was like, right. drop the mic. Now, of course, we know what happened afterwards. Upon quoting Isaiah, Israel's religious leaders were not pleased that he was upsetting the order of things, of how things were going, their form of godliness, their form of religion. So they plotted. Now understand, these were the religious leaders of the day. They could be called the church of that time. And they were so religious that they could not even recognize the Messiah, the one that they had been waiting for in their very midst. They were so religious and they plotted to have him killed. And they obviously succeeded, but they could not kill his spirit. They could not kill his Ruach. This was all part of the plan. Their religiosity was part of the plan. That plan? To empower, to inspire, to inspirit us, his followers today. Romans 8, 1 states, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Power. 
Next week's Pastor Rich is going to preach on that power. Power over death because his spirit is the creator. His spirit is the animator of life. Now consider when Jesus appeared to his disciples in John 20, 21, and 22, he breathed on them. And it says, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. He transferred the Ruach of God to them. And he equipped them with power to do the things that he had been doing. He equipped them to do the things that they could not do in their own strength. So now you may be saying to yourself, Pastor Freeman, what does that have? That was good for them. That was a great story, great, great examples. And that comes from this history book. But what does that have to do with me in 2022? And that leads me to my final point. He is everywhere at all times. I remember many years ago when my daughter Vanessa was about, I think she was six at the time. And we were attending Calvary Church in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Illinois. And in fact, that is where I first met Pastor Rich. And he was at that time a traveling evangelist. And he was traveling with Pastor Alan Griffin, who is now Dr. Alan Griffin. And man, and you're now doctor, and you're doctor as well. Who would have thought all of this would have happened all over all that time? That I'd even be standing here holding a mic, preaching to you. I mean, God has a sense of humor. So one evening service, <laughs> we were having an anointing service in which we were expecting to see the power of God. We were expecting to see the power of God fall in that place and the Holy Spirit move. And my daughter seemed extremely fearful. She was very agitated. And she did, you know, it's like we, we had never really seen her like that. So my wife went up to her and said, hey, kid, what's wrong? And she said, uh, I'm afraid. And she said, what? What are you afraid of? She said, what's the Holy Spirit going to do to me? So she was concerned that the Holy Spirit was going to make her do something that she did not want to do. So, of course, my wife explained to her the Holy Spirit and, and explained that the Holy Spirit wouldn't do anything to her that she didn't want to do. And the Holy Spirit is gentle as a dove. And she eventually, well, I mean, she was pretty agitated about it. And she's still, she's kind of apprehensive, but she eventually experienced the power of God for herself. And now she is using that power to help her and guide her and lead her as, a, as she serves as a psychiatrist in the U.S. Army, helping guide people back from darkness. So I submit to you today that many of us are lacking in power and authority. Now, we're good Christians. We're religious. But it may be for the same reason that Vanessa was afraid of. And that is, what's the Holy Spirit going to do to me? What's the Holy Spirit going to make me do? Or put another way, what's the Holy Spirit going to make me give up? That is a very unique form of godliness. Very unique form of religiosity kind of reminds me of 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. 
People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. Huh. I wonder who he's talking about. (laughs) Having a form of godliness, but denying its power? That means that they are godly acting, that they are religious but they are denying the power of God. Have nothing to do with such people. Huh? Now, I'm I'm wondering why he put that in there, having nothing to do with such people, because those type of people can't believe for the impossible. Huh? Now, don't think for a minute that we are any different from those religious folks who crucified their Messiah, the Messiah. Unless we check ourselves daily and take up our cross, we are in danger of becoming modern day Pharisees. Why do you think pastor is teaching on the Holy Spirit? Simply because he has recognized that for us to move forward as a church and to get to the next spiritual level, we are going to need a new anointing. We are going to need a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always everywhere. He is all around us. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, he is also in you. We are living in unprecedented times. Times in which we are going to need new ideas, new vision, new vision. And not just for the church, but for everyday life. God, help me not to go to the grocery store when something like that could happen. Spirit, talk to me ahead of time. In Moses' time, fresh manna was given every morning. And the previous day's manna went stale. We can't live on yesterday's blessings. We can't go by, well, that's how we always used to do it. Because that's, that's, that's gone. We, as a people of God, are going to have to seek the fresh manna daily the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we are going to have to let him have his will and have his way in our lives. We are going to have to submit ourselves, give up that what we're holding on to. So I'm simply going to close with this verse, and you godly folks know this very well. Zechariah 4, 6. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. I'm going to call the musicians to the stage, and I'm also going to call pastor to close us out. And I, but I want, to, I want you to understand that each one of you has a gifting, and each one of you has access to the Holy Spirit. If you are breathing today, if you have come to the other side of COVID, you have purpose in the kingdom of God. God has invested his spirit within you, or he will if you will receive the gift of salvation today. An investment. Uh, in pouring of something into somebody where you are expecting a return on that investment. 
Don't be like the man who buried his talent. Give God the return that he deserves for investing in you. This world needs you. This church needs you. Your family needs you to fully be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's all I got. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you for your attention. Pastor Dave and I were talking between services in the back. It was not a planned conversation. We have unplanned conversations regularly. And he's so brilliant that he always brings something up that is just out of the ordinary. We got to talking about artificial intelligence between services. And he said, you know, Pastor Rich, he said, as a young man, he goes, I studied AI. And I, he goes, I was invigorated. I loved it. I was so excited about the future. So pumped where we could go as a society and as a world. Artificial intelligence. He said, I'm going to tell you something. I don't feel that way anymore. Because that Timothy passage that he read has so impacted our society and the world in the past 30 years that Pastor Dave said, I don't know who's programming these robots, this artificial intelligence. He goes, I'm absolutely alarmed. It's funny because during the pandemic, I was watching a speech by Elon Musk. He's come into prominence recently, but he's been around for a long time. And he said in this speech, if you're a parent, you ought to be out of your mind afraid of artificial intelligence. You have no idea what's fixing to come onto this planet through AI. That's what he was saying. In the, in the presentation. Why do I bring that up? We have the Holy Spirit. This is the only combatant to the filth and the debauchery that has taken over this nation. You better be in contact with the Holy Ghost. You better be in relationship with the Holy Ghost. He is divine. He is God. He knows what's going to happen in 30 seconds and in 30 months from now. He knows what's fixing to happen. And I'm ready to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit as never before. Stand to your feet. There's a couple things I want to call today for. First of all, as Pastor David ended the message, he said some of you in this room need to give some things up. And if you're in this room today, you say, Pastor Rich, I love the Lord. But as he was preaching, I thought to myself, it's time for me to give that up. I need to give that up. I need to give that up. I need to run to Jesus. I need to give that up. I need to give that up. If that's you today, and there's some things overflow, main auditorium, back in the back corner. There's some things that you need to give up today. I want to pray over you. I'm not going to make you go out in the overflow. I'm just saying I need to pray with you. So we're going to sing this song. And if there's some things God is calling you today to give up so you can chase Jesus harder, step from where you are and come with me right now. Come as they sing it. Stay right here with me. I'm proud of you. All the glory and the honor. My sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. My future is heaven. I praise God. I thank God. Come on. Some things you need to give up. You come now. Don't stand there like you're perfect. You need to get to this altar. You come. Hallelujah. 
proud of you. I'm proud of you. God bless you, sweet mother. Come on, fellas, fellas. God's calling you. Come, come, come. My future is heaven. I praise God. I praise God. I thank God for what he's done. Now, now, now. I've got a whole side open over here. I got a whole side. Here's the other call I'm gonna make that we're gonna pray all at once. Some of you in this room have been struggling. What do I do with my life? What is my purpose? And you've got gifts, but you don't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit on your gifts. David read the Old Testament passage, was it Bazal? Bazal, I can never say his name, that God picked him for a specific creative gift. And this room is filled with creativity. I'm telling you. I'm so proud of you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, dear girl. Full of creativity that is locked up in you. And today God wants to reach down from heaven and boom! Just touch that gift. And all of a sudden you can't hide that gift anymore because you're going to feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit on that gift. So we're going to sing it again. And if you've got that gift and you're afraid to let it out, I want you to step from where you are and come to this side. Come, come, come now, come on. What he's done. What he's done. What he's done. You got it. You got it. Yes, you do. You do. You absolutely do. Hallelujah. I need this whole front row all the way across, all the way across. I want you to come in close. Just come in and touch my friends. Would you do it? Come from that side too. Just come all the way over. If you're on the front row, come to the front right now. I want you to touch someone on the shoulder like this. Just touch them on the shoulder. They need to know that somebody's with them in this mission, all right? And I want the rest of you, I want you to reach your hands in the direction of this altar. If you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, I want all of you right now to reach towards this altar. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray out loud in the Holy Ghost right now. Before I lead in prayer in English, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh God. Come on. Put your hand on it, Paul. Put your hand on it, Jesus. 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 Oh, put your hand on it, Jesus. Put your hand on it, Jesus. Put your hand on it, Jesus. Put your hands on it, Jesus. Karababa basanda. Karababa basanda. Hallelujah. Put your hand on him, God. Put your hand on him, Jesus. Put your hand on him today. Oh, God, touch her today. Touch her today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, Oh, God, Oh, God, Touch her, God. Touch her, God. Put the Holy Ghost. 
Oh God, redirect you. Walk away, walk away. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, there are two groups at this altar, one that need to walk away from stuff and another group that needs to let the gift out. I'm praying, God, that you'll give them power to walk away from stuff so they can chase after you. I pray, God, that you would anoint the gift that's in them to the point that they can no longer keep it in. But God, they've got to let it out. Oh, Holy Ghost, come upon your people today, I pray. Raise your hands, church, and just say it out loud. Lord, I receive the Holy Ghost. I receive the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive it, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit of God. Touch my life afresh, God. Touch me afresh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Ooh. Ooh. He's here, church. He's here this morning. How many need a healing in your body? Raise your hand. You need to be healed. If someone is near you and their hands raised, touch them on the shoulder across this auditorium. Touch them. Re go to them. Get to them right now. Touch them. Your hands are anointed today with the power of God. The Holy Spirit is here. I want you now to receive healing. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, Mark 11, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And Lord Jesus, in this moment, I pray that the dunamis of heaven, the Holy Ghost himself, would literally heal every outstretched hand in this room and what that hand represents. Cancers would have to go. Bone diseases would have to go. Blood disorders has to go today. Blinded eyes must open. Deaf ears must open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Kidney disease must leave. Heart disease must leave, must leave in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. What a message Pastor David Freeman preached today. My, my, my. And our altar service. And you know, there was two calls for that altar service. One was for those that need to repent, need to change. Maybe that's you today. And if it is you, I want you to join me in a prayer right now. In fact, the prayer that I lead every Sunday at the end of our online services, I always ask you to follow me in this prayer. So whether you feel that you need forgiveness or not, I want everybody to pray this prayer with me out loud if you were. Dear Jesus, I've sinned. I'm not proud of it, but I admit it. Today, Lord, I lay my sin down. Take it, I pray. I don't want it anymore. I reach to heaven to receive your forgiveness, to take the place of my sin. I ask that you would accept me into your wonderful family. Today, Jesus, I give my life completely to you. I'm yours, Lord. Amen. Hey, if you meant that prayer, you're a forgiven person. And here's what I'd like you to do. On the bottom of your screen is my personal cell number. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or for the first time in a long time, 
I want you to dial my number and then text the word. Pastor, I prayed the prayer. Pastor, I prayed the word. Text that and then hit send. Would you do that right now? And then there was a second call I made. The call, second call was for those of you that feel that you have a creative gift, creativity, and you've been hiding it, you keep pushing it down because maybe you're embarrassed or what would people think? But we have all kinds of opportunities here at Trinity Church, all kinds of opportunity to express your creativity. If you're interested in being on one of our creative teams, I want you to dial my number as well. It's on the bottom screen. And just text me these words, Pastor, I'm a creative. And that will signal me that you would like us to reach towards you and see if you would like to take one of our opportunities. Dial my number and then put in the text, Pastor, I'm a creative. Hit send. I'll get it today and the right people will reach to you. I hope you do. Until next time, this is Pastor Rich Wilkerson reminding you to go with God.